Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Woohoo! Woo um, I'd say I'm, my name is Kimo. I am Blair Bojwani. Welcome. And uh, we just really wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. And um, as, as you heard earlier, Kent was saying, you know, we are the thing that's between you and cocktails. <laughs> so just putting that in perspective and thinking about all of that, what we thought we would do is kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, so what I mean by that is we, we thought we would do is we wanted to share with you a story. And the story will have a beginning, you know, like once upon a time. And we'll go through the story and share that, that story with you. In addition to that, uh, it's going to be, if you will, just more graphic in orientation. It'll be a little different. But in addition to that, we also want to reassure you that, yes, we have all those lovely PowerPoint presentations at the back of the presentation. Rest assured, those of you that want to see the analytics, we can certainly share that with you. So with that, what I wanted to do is just kind of share some of the the many places. How many of you, by the way, are Hilton Honors members? Raise your hand. Woo! Raise your thank you, okay. thank you, thank you. So this is Hilton Worldwide, the world of Hilton Worldwide. And I'm very excited to say, because one of the reasons I've been there about now four years, I pale to Blair, <laughs> who's been there for 22 years. 22 Put it up for Blair. Years. Thank 22 you. years. <laughs> um, and us. really, this whole presentation is really about Blair, okay? It's not about because Blair. Because Blair is ultimately the one, you know, I'm kind of here, you know, she's smart and beautiful, I'm just here. <laughs> so uh, I'll kind of hold it up, but it's just to really kind of give some context around it, but to tell you a little bit about our story, and we're gonna share some of the success that we've had with all of you. So with that, um, Hilton Worldwide, this is kind of our universe. I'm really also excited to say I've been there four years. One of the key reasons why I was so juiced and excited to join Hilton Worldwide is because at the time, they were private equity by Blackstone, the largest private equity in the world. And they had taken over Hilton International, Hilton North America. And their goal was to take it public. So on December 12th of last year, 2013, we went public. We we're the largest hospitality company to go public. So to be part of taking a company that's 94 years old in over 90 countries with 300,000 team members globally around the world, what a wonderful opportunity to be able to do that. So a lot on the horizon. These are our 10 brands that we learn from and that we gain insights from and that also we enable to support them from a learning perspective. We're divided by categories and these are the following categories. Sort of at the top, if you will, our luxury category would be the Waldorf Astoria and Conrad Hotels and Resorts. Our full service hotels would be Hilton Hotels and Resorts, Doubletree by Hilton, and then also Embassy Suites. And then in our focus service brands, you can see we have Hilton Garden Inn, Hampton, Homewood Suites by Hilton, and also Home 2 by Hilton. In addition to that, we have Hilton Grand Vacations, which is our interval ownership business, or what you would refer to as timeshare. And that represents, that little brand that you see there that's global, represents about a third of EBITDA. So it's a very, very, and probably one of the fastest growing session, sections of our business. And there's a huge shift for us to move internationally as we expand globally. About 75% of our business is in North America. And then the other remaining 25% is outside the US, operating in over 90 countries. So uh, it's a very exciting time. With a, we have the largest pipeline of guest rooms in the industry that we have opening. In this coming year, in 2014, we will open 88 full service hotels globally around the world. So with that in mind, let's go around the world and let's take a little look at some of our wonderful places that we have. Um, this is, you know, I, we tried to do international destinations. Not a bad place to visit. Yeah, not a bad place. So Cabo. And then we have, this is Orlando. This is Istanbul, Turkey. We just opened this. And then this, of course, I'm from Hawaii, so I have to get a little Hawaii plug in there. This is the Waikoloa Resort. So just to give you some idea. Um, and then what I thought I would do is, uh, and this also is Beijing. In Beijing. China. You know why I couldn't have a hard time remembering? Because the cloud's clear and you can actually see the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wanted to go back a little bit. And so what we did at, within Hilton is we transformed learning. So 
Part of the story here is that Hilton was kind of very, dis our, our function and many other functions were very siloed. And we came together as to one organization. And as a part of that, we also created this whole concept of Hilton Worldwide University, which is this, which is this. And so that is our logo. Um, and if you will, our brand, that we, that our learning brand that we have within Hilton Worldwide, and it's called Hilton Worldwide University. What we'd like to do is to let you know that someone in this room is going to win a very fabulous prize. Absolutely. So stay tuned. Uh, do we have your attention? <laughs> Let's, yes. <laughs> okay, so with that, why don't we kind of, what I'd like to do is just uh, kind of get in to tell you a little bit of the story uh, of how we did this. And I think what we've truly really tried to do between Blair and I is to, how do we really, you know, create what is really the strategy for learning. How do we drive greater awareness about this? How do we implement, what are the key KPIs of what this is going to be? And then how do we create a scorecard? And then last, how could we do an impact study to show that we actually did something and we actually made an impact? So with that, that's what we'd like to do. But you know, kind of at heart, we like this whole concept of learning. So let me just show you what Blair and I were busy doing. Our first, there you go. We Met take you. selfies of ourselves <laughs> and our post events. We love our tools so, so much. <laughs> there you can see the MTM tool right there. Okay, there's one. Okay, here's another one. Our scorecard. There's our scorecard. <laughs> Look how high those scores so are. So proud, so proud. Very proud. We'll actually show you the actual stats. And of course, a photo bomb. Of people you taking their surveys. <laughs> people taking their surveys. <laughs> We have fun at Hilton. <laughs> so with that in mind, you know, let us go where it all kind of began. And this journey, I would say, was over really three years ago. And one of the first things that I, when I did when I first joined the organization was, well, do we have a strategy around metrics and evaluation here at Hilton Worldwide? And the answer was, well, no. kind, well, <laughs> maybe, may, kind, kind. You know, so you got lots of mixed answers as to what you, what it was. So it kind of was, I would describe it as rather disparate. It was kind of a little bit all over the board. We really did not have one set, if you will. So in many cases, we would use our dear, what's one of our first and most favorite survey tools that we use that everyone has access to pretty much? Survey Monkey. <laughs> Woohoo! You know, I'm sorry, it doesn't do it. You know, so one of the things we realized was we just we 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 also had, of course, stubby pencils and we had paper. Lots of we paper. used that. You know, our questions were all over the board. We, for this group, we used these questions. For this group, we used this questions. We had the scale. Don't tell KA this, <laughs> but we had a scale of one to ten. Oh my God! They don't like that scale. They don't like that scale action of one to ten. <laughs> Just, you know, so, you know, again, there was another opportunity for us to, to really do that. But the bottom line is what I would just try to sh share with you was that it was really rather unorganized. It was really rather disparate. It wasn't consistent. It wasn't globally applied. It wasn't enabled by technology. It didn't come out with something that would be contributing to the overall scorecard of the organization. And we couldn't tell a story. So with that, we kind of said, let's get started and let's take this journey on of how we can bring better metrics and analytics to learning and ultimately to human resources that we do at Hilton Worldwide. So in the beginning, in our partnership with Knowledge Advisors and the Metrics That Matter tool, it was a balancing act. It wasn't like turn on the switch and, and it works perfectly. We had a lot of convincing to do with our stakeholders and our brand partners because they loved the surveys they were using. None of them were consistent and none of them could tell trends and none of them would tell benchmarks, but they really liked the questions that they asked. So when we started on this journey, one of the first things we did in our partnership was to take an assessment where internally we diagnosed and, and took the tool that asked a series of questions around, did we have a strategy? And it really benchmarked us against the eight criteria of a good company having a learning measurement strategy. How many of you have seen the eight criteria? Governance, okay, leadership, great. et cetera. Perfect. We'll, we'll <laughs> and, get to that later yeah. too. So, after taking this survey, it told us a few things. It told us that, like Kimo said, we really didn't have a strategy. We didn't have governance in place. We, we had a desire to do that. And that what was very heartening was that our learning professionals agreed, we can do better, we have to do better. And just sharing how many people attended a class and how many um, 
people were certified, that really doesn't tell you much. It doesn't talk about application, return, transfer of knowledge, etc. So there was a strong hunger for all of that, and we were ready to go through our tool. After that diagnostic tool, it kind of netted out to say, OK, Hilton, you have a lot of work to do. You are acting like a company that has no technology support and, again, need to set up some consistent practices. So no surprises, and we were really ready to go. So how many of you have heard of this uh, maturity curve? Kind of looks like this, looks like this, one to five, yeah. right? OK, so on the maturity curve, we weren't really doing so good. <laughs> I think generously, we were about a one and a half, yeah. where, again, lots of room for improvement. And we really strived in the year of 2013 to take it up and to kind of net out in that 2.53 range, where, again, we set up some common practices and some processes and you know, truly were ready to go. One of the, uh, again, one of the really big struggles we had early on, and I don't know if any of you faced this, was, you know, I kind of was like when I first got into this metrics and looking at all these surveys, we had about 42 surveys for 58 classes. It was, you know, just unreal. And in, in talking with our knowledge advisors, team members, you know, I came to find out, you know, really, Blair, companies have maybe three to five surveys for hundreds of their programs. And I really couldn't believe that. I was like, how are we ever going to get there? I am proud to say that we do have about four consistent surveys and then a little bucket of one-offs, but that's okay. But it's better than having 42. So we've made you know, tremendous progress and again, in, with a great partnership in KA. We've come a long way and now we want to share with you a little bit about today and how we're thriving and how we're moving forward. So the story for today kind of goes back to, again, what was our overall strategic objective? And I kind of mentioned, by the way, this was on Blair's performance review this year, <laughs> um, which, by the way, she nailed this one out of, she just nailed this one, and she just did an excellent job. First and foremost for our, was to, you know, strategy, yes, have one, good idea. So, you know, so we, what her, her role was to create what is going to be our metrics analytics strategy for Hilton Worldwide University. Second, it would be to, to determine what would be the KPIs or the key performance indicators for that strategy. Third would be to create and to launch a scorecard. And fourth was to actually do, and this is a little bit of KA speak, but to do a, yes. to do a full-fledged impact study where we would be able to do a deep dive into a program, which we're going to share with you the results of that deep dive and how we did. And so that's kind of what we've accomplished for 2013. And we'll share with you what the road ahead looks like for 2014. Great. So talking about those key performance indicators, building a scorecard and doing our impact study, again, all rolled up to executing this learning strategy. And quite quickly, we realized out of those eight dimensions, we really had to focus on governance and communication. And in, in the communication space, we were able to really rally our own internal team to have the desire to get on the same page and have consistent surveys. And then we did a lot of influencing with our brand partners and other facilitators to get them to realize the value of you know, one platform, leverage the tools, and leverage the reports. So we were on a good uh, path there. Then we started to look at the KPIs to build the scorecard. And this is where I can honestly say KA made it so easy. It was like going to the buffet and picking a, a stuff from column A, column B, the desserts and the salads, and just really made it easy to get some groundwork and get some quick wins in this space. Because with your KPIs, you're measuring efficiency, effectiveness, and outcomes out of those three buckets. And you want to pick things that work for your organization to then roll up into your scorecard, or for some of you, it's your dashboard. And so in the beginning, when we looked at you know, all the menu items under efficiency and effectiveness and outcomes, it's very easy to get a little overwhelmed and be like, how am I ever going to find all that data? Well, again, we took a phased approach. We knew, again, we wanted some quick wins. We knew we didn't want to hunt and peck to find data. We said, you know, what does the system already provide us that can tell a rich and dynamic story? And it really was that easy. Under efficiencies, we first started with, OK, let's find out you know, how many people are we putting through classes and how many surveys are we collecting. And that, again, is a pretty easy number to find out. You can also look at the costs of learning, the costs for the facilitation, and all of um, that's associated with the finance and learning. And we were clearly not ready to go there. It would have been too hard to dig through the finances and the analytics to get those numbers easy. So we've made that a goal for 2014. And we're going to start to build that now for this year. 
under the effectiveness column or section, for me, that's what's the most richest story there. It's around content and facilitation and ROI and job impact and learning effectiveness. And again, all of that data we got from our surveys, so it was easy to populate. And you can see the trends, and you can see what programs are really your standout program in effectiveness. And then in the last bucket were our outcomes, where it measured overall satisfaction. It gave you some predictive analytics on future use and what you could expect in productivity. And again, really cool stuff. What's also neat about the outcome section is you can, through manual input, you can enter things around, are you executing on your business goals? Are you executing in your learning strategy? Again, we decided not to turn on those widgets just yet because it would have been extra work. And we, already, we knew we had a lot of work already to do in just using and utilizing the pure tool and the, and the dashboard. So we have not turned on those things. But again, they're all there. It's easy to do. And KA you know, walked us through from the beginning to the end to have a successful scorecard, which for years, Chemo wanted to get up and running. And we're really proud that we were able to do that this year. So again, through development of the KPIs first, and then you get your online scorecard, and we are almost there with all of our objectives. So keyword that's something that Blair just said was online. Um, so that allows us for global distribution. And then ultimately, and what we're doing already is just how do we embed that into the whole process. By the way, our learning management uh, tool is SuccessFactors. We use SuccessFactors for performance, succession, and also now for learning. We've just completed the implementation for the learning management system of success factors across our organization, <laughs> and we have now taken it to 211,000 people across the 10 brands. So it's, um, it's a rather big deal. <laughs> I focus on that every day. Um, and it's a big part of you know, you know, how do we get that to really work well. But what I thought I would do is do a little knowledge check. Uh, this, is an, this is now the interactive portion of, of, our, of, our, of our presentation. So Blair was talking about the three kind of big dimensions that you wanted to look if you're going to be going down this path. What would the, what would, let's name the three. Just give, someone call out. Give me one of them. OK, efficiency, the second one, effectiveness, and the third, Excellent. outcomes. Woohoo! How we doing? Good job. How we doing? OK, pretty good. So now we're talking about this whole notion of how do we get on to doing this impact study. And what we were thinking about, you know, what would be a good candidate to, to use to do the impact study. And so I come from a background when I've done this in the past where, you know, sales is a really good place to go. Because with sales, what you can do, and this is what I have done in the past, you would do some sort of I would use mystery shoppers and do a mystery shopper. I would then, they would have that, I would have that result. They would do pre-work. They would take a pre-test. They come to the training and they take lots of assessments during the trainings and they do performance. We actually watch them do an actual sales call. They do a post-test. What's that post-test allowed me to measure? Knowledge gained, right? Knowledge gained. And then I do an observation that watch me to see behavior gained, right? I can watch how they behave to do it. And then about 60 days down the road, we would also then do a mystery shopper experience again. And we would see how they did from a mystery shopper experience. And I will tell you, and this was in a past life, we were able to demonstrate that that returned a 9% increase in sales as a result of doing that. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I were to present to you an argument that said, you get to raise sales by 9%, do you think you would want to send your people to training? You're <laughs> damn right you would. <laughs> so that's kind of the simple approach to that. And what we wanted to do was to look, so I went to our sales colleague. We were in the process of rolling out this whole new program, uh, which is in partnership with Wilson Learning. And we were doing this thing called the Counselor Sales Approach. And it was a complete new platform that we were going to be using for our entire sales approach. And so uh, I went to them and said, hey, would you like to do this wonderful impact study? We're going to measure it, and we're going to compare it, and there's going to be lots of benchmarks, and it's going to be really good. The benchmark's 1.25 million in the benchmark. We'll get lots of good data. You know, and they're like, well, no, not really. <laughs> you know, well, we're kind of really busy. We're trying to implement this program. We haven't really gotten it global. We're still trying to get all the kinks out of the program. And so we had a lot of false starts and stops. 
quite honestly, would be doing that. So I would share with you some lessons learned in this area that the biggest lesson I would teach you is go where the fish are biting. <laughs> so if the fish are biting somewhere else, go there. Just go where the fish are biting. And that made a huge difference. So we actually changed the program that we chose, and we ended up using and uh, going with a partner who's also on our team. His name is Josh Rovner, um, who, by the way, is a revenue management just, he's not a learning person. He is like Mr. Revenue Management. <laughs> so, you know, revenue management is all about the whole notion of, you know, you fly a lot, you all of you have been on planes, and you just know that all of those seats are priced at a different price. Every little thing that you want is priced differently, and everything is about how we maximize that. Same in the hotel business. Absolutely everything. By the way, if you wanted to upgrade and to go to the Ambassador Club here at the Interconti, it's $90 extra a day, right? So it's not a bad little upgrade, but that's the revenue that they're gaining from that. So I will tell you that Josh uh, is not, a, he was not a learning person, but now, so I'm coming to him with all these analytics about, hey, Josh, we're going to work on this project, this impact study. We're going to measure the analytics of all this, and we're going to be able to see what the impact that you've had as a result of doing all the training. And he was like, wow, that's really good. Sign me up. I'm going to do it. And again, it was just in his, it was in his DNA to do that. So we had a total convert, and we used, and in, in fact, that's what we're going to share with you, the result of what we did with our revenue management project. So we had Josh, a very excited partner, versus our sales friends who were like keeping us at arm's distance to say, please don't you know, bother us. And we were excited to have uh, found Josh. And also our partner with KA, John Maddox, where are you? Woohoo! Woo the Thank ace John. You. John has spent probably a whole year's worth of for East Coast time, 4 p.m. on a Friday. Every Friday Every 4 p.m. Friday on a call with us talking about revenue management analytics. So in our revenue management space under our commercial college, we teach a specific program called Revenue Management at Work. It's a three-day course targeted to anybody in revenue management at our hotels that teaches them the fundamentals of revenue management philosophy, but even more importantly, how to turn on the tools to rev up their commercial engine at their hotel. Ultimately, the goal, drive revenue to the bottom line. More guests, higher rev par, higher rev par index. Those are um, terms around revenue growth at our hotels. So we had these, we isolated to this one program. It was taught about 42 times in the year. And we had, so we had good mass population with about 20 to 30 team members in each class. And we looked at the classes for about a nine month period. And they did post event surveys. And then we did six month surveys and a year out surveys. And we also did surveys to their managers to see the relationship and the impact that was made. And we asked very specific questions about you know, what tools did you use the most after the class? What difference did it make? And so we were collecting all of that data, which was great data. Some of the key statistics that d that data shared with us was um, after six months, people felt 83% uh, of the team members felt the training improved their job. Um, they felt 80% felt that it helped them with their success. And then 94% said within six weeks of getting back to their hotel, they immediately applied some of those tools. So in itself, those were great statistics. But that in itself didn't tell us does that training impact revenue growth at the hotels? So through the magic of John and our analytics team on our revenue management department led by Josh, we were able to take all of the hotels that were trained and compare them to non-hotels that didn't, I mean, hotels that did not go through their training, but were very similar. Wait, and that is called a <laughs> woohoo okay, control thank group. You. Very good. Very good. Just checking. And they were. They were what we called exact matches in that they hadn't taken the training compared to the hotels that did, but they were similar in their competitive set and or location and or type of business. So resort to resort, business hotel to business hotel, et cetera. And as we looked at the data and the revenue from the hotels that were trained versus the, the non-hotels that were trained, we couldn't believe and were really startled at the revenue difference that was generated by the hotels that went to the training. On a million dollar basis, the hotels that were trained <laughs> came up about $20.9 million higher in revenue than the hotels that weren't trained. So in itself, that was, again, startling to see the difference. 
The question, though, we had to be very honest with ourselves, was to say, out of that 20 million, really how much of tr the impact was because of training. We couldn't take all the credit. We wanted to take all the credit, but we couldn't take all the credit of $20.9 million. So again, through the magic of KA and, and their analyses and getting um, looking at you know, se sequencing some of the, um, the data out and really focusing on the true impact that training had, what do you think was the percentage of um, impact of that 20.9 million? Not John, but on a percentage basis, what do you think? 20, 30, 40? It, it actually netted about 16%. So even at, at that percentage, we really were you know, thrilled to see the difference. And that netted about $3.3 .3 million as a total contribution that training made in that nine month period. Um, when you looked at it, Per um, over the nine months per hotel, it was about forty-four thousand dollars, and you know again we have some more statistics that um, really share the story of how we you know by the fact that team members really went to the revenue management at work class, it really was a true success. So again, we don't want to keep that to ourselves. We were jumping up and down, and we were like, oh my god, we have to tell the story. So we shared it with senior leadership, everybody from our CFO, our head of revenue management, our head of commercial services, and they, again, were really proud of the efforts and, in fact, you know, asked us for more analytics and to keep the study going. So we, while we, in now for this year, we continue some post um, impact surveys and we're measuring a little bit of the revenue gain. We're not doing this full-blown study as we did last year, but we're going to continue the efforts to, you know, see the impact. And, you know, if that doesn't sell the work that we're doing, I don't know what would. So we're really proud of those efforts and the tremendous impact that learning made. So, you know, Blair kind of talked about, and it is true, John Maddox does do magic. Um, <laughs> but what we also wanted to say is, you know, there's the, there's the whole validity piece that's behind this. So is this statistically relevant? So where did all this take us to? <laughs> when we submitted, and that, that's the big dog with ASTD, uh, also a, a great colleague, Tony Bingham. So uh, we submitted our application which, by the way, is due this coming week if you wanted to be interested to apply for this for year. For 2014. <laughs> um, for 2014. But this is for the ASCD Best Award. So this is, and we used the story that Blair is just telling you about. We used that really as the meat of our entire presentation for our nomination for the ASCD Best Award. And I'm very, very proud to say that we won sixth place. The only, the high, the only hospitality company to receive that recognition. And you know, approximately out of 40 companies. Yay! So very proud, very proud. And you know, the feedback that we got as a result of all that was you know, all of the nice submissions that you make are, and the stories that you tell are really good, but it's data that speaks and it's data that will make the difference and it's data that they're actually looking for when they do the analysis of, of, of the recognition for the SED Best Awards. So, you know, hats off in terms of our being able to do that, being able to capture that data, tell that story of that impact study that we've been able to do. So further to the success, again, we were really proud of the award. You know, certainly we had success just by having consistent surveys. We had success, when you look at our, um, our survey results, we now have a scale of one to five. And generally, most programs hit between the four and the five range. And we're really proud of that. And again, though, it's still easy to identify where improvements need to be made. We had success through our impact study, and now we even have success when people ask, they're, they're seeking our metrics. They want to learn more. They want to know more. And now all of our metrics from the dashboard roll up to a, a bigger HR scorecard. So we're contributors to that. Um, we, again, we have greater awareness. And you know, certainly, success is using the data that we get from our surveys to drive the decisions in our curriculum. What should we continue to teach? What should we change? what do we need to refresh, et cetera. We are continually looking at that program data to make sure we're on track. So for our planning purposes for 2014, when we're doing is we went back to this data to see where would be the programs that would have opportunities. Um, and I don't know if it's just because in the hospitality business we're pretty kind and generous. But if you were to actually see our actual scores, they're, they're very high. And they're also very high compared to the benchmark. So what uh, I just wanted to kind of share with you, what are some of the lessons learned um, that we've been able to take away from doing this? And what I would just kind of start by just telling you is having a strategy is a really good idea. 
So again, going back to my four <laughs> objectives, have a strategy, determine what the KPIs are, create a scorecard, do an impact study, re make it repeatable, scalable, do it around the world, have it automated and enabled by technology as much as possible. And now, and that's what we're really trying to focus on is so how do we automate all of this to make that work very simply. The good news is, is that's what the, the beauty of this, the MTM tool does, is allow you to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would just share with you is a really big key learning for me is around the importance of executive sponsorship. So, you know, how do we make sure that our executive key sponsors are engaged and aligned? So, you know, she mentioned we went to the head of revenue management, whose name is Chris Silcock. When we told him this story, it was like a no-brainer. So he was just like, feed me more, tell me more, I want more. And we can see the direct impact of what that has to the business. And that's been a key, a key piece. I also said early in the presentation, I said another key learning is go where the fish are biting. So if you have an early adopter out there that's like, I wanna do this, I really wanna do this, <laughs> great. Let's use that energy to go with and to have them be one of your business co-sponsors to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes a key difference. And then the other thing I would just say as a learning is experiment, 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 petri dish, petri dish, petri dish, try it, try it, try it. And you know what? If it doesn't work, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Yeah. And just two, try it again. <laughs> thanks, Kimo. And some other lessons learned from more of the tactical side, I would say, have confidence in the tools. I mean, you wouldn't come to me for brain surgery and I wouldn't go to you for survey questions. That's why we have knowledge advisors. I mean, clearly they are the experts in that field. And you know, what they put in front of you really does are, are sa is sound, it's relevant, and ultimately it really does work. And also, I would um, you know, say in our lessons learned, challenge yourself too, because again, we've had pretty, a lot of success with our ILT classes. We're now looking at, e we piloted some e-learning classes with the MTM tool, um, also webinars, and really taking it even uh, deeper into the organization. We do a lot of classes that are kind of our signature programs where we bring people together. We haven't really used the tool at the hotel level and we want to do some pilots there. So again, phased approach, start small and you know, build yourself up. You know, for us, it's year over year. We want to see growth, improvement, and we really want to expand what um, we're using in the suite of tools. So Kimo, let's share a little bit about what's next, the future. Yeah, so I think what, you know, what I'm excited about is it's now taking it to the next level. I think what you heard in earlier today's presentations, Jeffrey and uh, our colleagues from Granger, talking about some of these quick insights. So we want to be able to start utilizing some of those insights, those quick reference tools that we can. We are and have selected already another impact study that we're actually going to do um, and to start on. And in fact, uh, moving forward, I think we'll be using, really just using the expertise from knowledge advisors to help us do much of our learning, uh, our learning analytics for us. Because again, those reports can come right out of the can or they can run them for you. I necessarily don't have staff to do that. So you're kind of looking at, you know, and Blair and I both have a lot of other <laughs> responsibilities, but you're kind of looking at the analytics team for Hilton Worldwide right here. We're lean. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we would really like to just say a special thank you to all of our colleagues at Knowledge Advisors. That's really the, the engine that really powers a lot of this data. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we didn't want you to fear like, gosh, Hill and Ollie did was show us a bunch of pictures. I don't really have anything more to, to learn about. But actually, you are going to get all the details that we discussed, the scorecard, the eight measurements, you know, all the results. So you, you know, don't feel like you missed anything. It's, it's going to be all there. So we have the deck. Yes, <laughs> the you. deck is done. And we're here for you know, continued questions throughout the conference. You know what I always know? It's like, like when, it's very interesting when you go to a conference, everyone's taking pictures with their, yeah, their of iPhones. The slides. Of the slide. <laughs> but did you notice no one took our picture? <laughs> What's that about? I'm teasing. So you know, last night were the Academy Awards. I hope some of you got to enjoy it. And you know, I realized after three and a half hours, right, it was a long program, they, they forgot one of uh, the Oscars to give out. And that Oscar is best support to a KA client. And if we had a real Oscar to give out and we opened up the envelope, that envelope would say, Ms. Karen McNeela, Solutions Manager. <laughs> Woo -hoo! So truth be told, we were told, make sure that Karen's in the room. You know, she's kind of shy. She may and, not be here. And, and so if she knew that you were going to do this, she wouldn't come in the room at all. So 
We're Thank not going to make you say a speech, yeah. but <laughs> we could not have gotten to where we are without her. We correspond and talk like practically every day. She can finish a thought or a question that I have before I'm finished saying it. And it just, you know, just tremendous, tremendous support to us in everything from tactical support to strategic thinking. Again, Karen, we couldn't have done it without you and the team back in Chicago. But thank you so, so much. <laughs> thank you.